Matt the Law Lindland. He's an Olympic silver medalist in Greco-Roman wrestling that he won at the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. It is notable that at the time he won that medal, he'd already had multiple mixed martial arts bouts. He's one of the original members of Team Quest, which was founded by Randy Couture and Dan Henderson, who were all successful in translating their wrestling background across to freestyle fighting. And in this video, we will take a look at how Matt Lindland took his wrestling background and used it to score takedowns and dominate the clinch with dirty boxing in mixed martial arts. First off, let's look at how Matt Lindland closed the distance and initiated a clinch. He did this primarily with the use of a shifting step. This is where, from his southpaw stance, he would throw a straight left hand and at the same time take a step forward with his left foot so he would end up in an orthodox stance. While the straight left hand would force an opponent to block or react, the shifting step would then close the distance as if Matt was running towards his opponent and falling into the clinch. Now while throwing a single shot with the shifting step can be seen as a rudimentary attack, the shift is still used today to close the distance, but we will more likely see it being worked into larger combinations and with kicks. Matt would also begin to dirty box immediately after working his way into the clinch. After throwing the straight left hand, he would leave it out hanging and look to convert it directly into a collar tie and then he would begin to throw uppercuts and hooks with his right hand. After Matt had established the clinch, one means of off-balancing his opponent he would use was knee bumps. The knee bump will look as if he's throwing a knee to the thigh of his opponent, and this is used to destabilize their base, while at the same time he would manipulate their upper body by pushing on their shoulder with his overhook side and pulling on their lat with his underhook side. The knee bump is a crafty means of off-balancing the opponent, and we can see it being used here to transition directly into a front headlock. The front headlock is a control position that was favoured by Matt Linland. After wrapping up his opponent's head underneath his shoulder, his main objective was to throw powerful knees to their head. The common entry was to have a collar tie on his opponent, and then to snap their head down and into the front headlock on the same side. As well as throwing knees after the front headlock, knees could also be used to break the opponent's posture when looking to snap them down into the front headlock. And here Matt sprawls out into a front headlock and then takes the opponent down with an inside trip before basing up to throw knees to the head. Matt would also dirty box out of the front headlock, either converting to a collar tie or releasing the front headlock and as the opponent's head popped up, he would begin to throw uppercuts and hooks. When pressed against the fence, Matt would combine the knee bump and front headlock with pummeling and punching to shape his dirty boxing style. Mixing them together to off balance and keep the opponent defending his punches along with the threat of knees and a takedown. He preferred to have a single collar tie with his left arm or an underhook with his right arm and the dirty boxing punches he would throw from that single collar tie would be the uppercut to hook combinations where the uppercut can lift the opponent's head up to line it up for the hook to come around the side. And here you can see him combine these techniques together while securing an underhook with his right arm, he'll throw an elbow with his left to convert to a collar tie before throwing a knee, framing with his left and then uppercuts and hooks. Here's an interesting tactic Matt would use to pummel his left hand in for the underhook. You can see him here pushing the chin of his opponent with his left hand, which he uses to create space to pummel. He would use that left hand on the chin to create that space, or he would drive the left elbow underneath the chin and into the throat of his opponent, and when they would react by lifting an arm to defend, he would use that space to pummel in for the underhook. Here he has joined his hands together to reinforce his grip while driving his elbow into the jaw of his opponent before bouncing it off for a short elbow and securing the underhook. And here to pummel he brings his left hand into a collar tie before dropping it underneath to secure the underhook. He would also use his left arm to throw short elbows at the opponent and after they had connected he had the option to leave the elbow there driving it into the throat and chin of his opponent to gain a reaction for the underhook. And here he combines these techniques together by throwing uppercuts from a single collar tie before pummeling back in with his right hand, throwing a knee and then launching an elbow with his left hand and pummeling for the underhook.
One of the primary goals of getting those double underhooks is to secure a takedown. One of his favorites is what I like to call the bump and dump, which is where he has secured his hands together underneath the hips of his opponent, and to execute the takedown, he bumps them off the fence or the ring, and then pulls their legs out from underneath them. This is one of the most fundamental takedowns against the fence, and once the hands are locked together, it's an incredibly difficult takedown to stop from occurring. Other takedowns Matt would use would involve manipulating the opponent's upper body while blocking or tripping their lower body. This included takedowns such as the outside leg trip, but he also had a preference for the inside leg trip, which he used on multiple occasions. Although Matt's favorite takedown from the clinch was probably from the rear clinch or belly to back position, where he would look to suplex his opponents. After securing the clinch, Matt would consistently be looking to turn the corner around his opponent and underneath any overhook they may have to secure the rear clinch from where he would work his throws. And here against the fence, we can see Matt set this up by throwing an elbow with his left arm and as his opponent brings their overhook up to his head, Matt circles to the back and executes a trip. As soon as the opponent would remove their wizard even slightly up to the head of Matt, that was a direct pathway that he would take to get to the back. And once Matt had the belly to back position, it was very difficult to stop him from finishing a takedown. In conclusion, Matt Lindland was a pioneer in the UFC, and at one point he was considered by many as one of the best middleweights in the world, and through sheer determination he did earn himself a shot at the UFC title. Ultimately it was Matt Lindland's fierce competitive spirit that he had forged in his background of amateur wrestling that led him to many victories in mixed martial arts. Along with his training partners at Team Quest, Matt Lindland used that high level competition experience to develop a unique fighting style, elements of which we still see in use today. And that concludes this breakdown on the dirty boxing techniques and MMA wrestling of Matt Lindland. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it and comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and check out my website at sunnybrown.net and follow me on Twitter at sunnybrown. Thank you.